This video is part of an audiobook series featuring robots by the MIT Press Essential Knowledge Series by John Jordan in 2016. For more audiobooks, please visit my YouTube channel, find me on Spotify, or check out my website for downloads. Chapter 4 Robotics in the Present Tense Robotic devices are quietly permeating modern life. In nearly every domain, a wide variety of these technologies can increase accuracy, free humans from danger or drudgery, overcome the limits of human fatigue and limited sensory capacity, and extend human presence. Robotics can also dehumanize work and relationships, increase economic disruption, and give rise to other negative consequences for humans. The breadth of activity, variety of contexts, and speed of progress all contribute to a major change in the way people use computing. Artificial intelligence. If we use the sense-think-act model to define a robot, the think component de deserves special attention. At the most basic level, artificial intelligence describes efforts to recreate some degree of human reasoning with non-human elements or devices. Although the aspirations date from antiquity, the current landscape navigates from a benchmark placed in 1956, when a conference of early computer scientists at Dartmouth College formalized attempts to create electronic function that mimicked the human brain. John McCarthy, later the director of SAIL, Stanford's AI lab, is credited with coining the term in that year, and Marvin Minsky founded MIT's AI lab in 1957. Pursuing robotics was difficult in the 1960s and 1970s. Processing machinery was slow and big. The personal computer had not yet been invented. Wireless networks were slow and proprietary, and vision systems were slow, expensive, and low resolution. Much effort was devoted to building comprehensive cognitive maps of the robot's environment to knowing the world before interacting with it. But especially given slow processing, this approach produced limited results. A parallel effort was underway in AI computing. CYC was founded in 1984 as an attempt to build a comprehensive computer to ontology of everything. Having been taught that rain is a form of water and that water feels wet on the skin, the computer could potentially infer that if I state I came in from the rain, then I must be wet. At the time of its founding, the lead scientists claimed that it would take 350 man years to build the rules engine, but 30 years on, it remained unfinished. The field has weathered periods of extremely generous funding, followed by falls from favor. In the 1990s, jokes about the flush AI 80s were common in some circles. As funding decreased, refugees from AI dispersed. Some went on, some went into search, while others migrated into genomics and other biomedical fields. After the emergence of Google and the deep blue chess computer defeated Garry Kasparov in 1997, AI fields returned to prominence and funding, both governmental and investor. One current topic attracting high levels of interest is natural language processing, NLP, popularized in the Apple, Siri, Google's TypeAhead, and other search tools, and IBM's Watson computer. More than merely recognizing voice, natural language processing must disambiguate homonyms, ba bass, the fish, versus bass, the low-frequency sound, understand context, like what's that building off to the right, and decode jokes, malapropisms, and other illogical statements. The importance of AI for robotics is obvious. Human-computer interaction, physical locomotion, collision avoidance, and image recognition all rely on tools that at some level must mimic or replace human cognition. Industrial robots. At the same time that computer scientists aspired to make machines more like brains, a separate group of entrepreneurs was looking to, repl to replicate human muscle and bone. The story of their combined efforts unfolded far from university labs, in garages and machine shops. In the United States, the two main figures were George Duvall and his associate, Joseph Engelberger. Duvall applied for the first robotics patents in 1954, predating the Dartmouth AI conference, and these were dated in 1960 or these were granted in 1961. Duvall and Engelberger founded 
Unimation in the mid-1950s and produced the first industrial robot, the Unimate. It transferred work in process between factory locations several feet apart. Japan entered the market when Kawasaki Heavy Industries licensed the technology from Unimation. Adoption of robotics technologies was slow in the 1960s. Foreign automotive competition was not yet intense, and large manufacturers feared moving out of step with their industry counterparts. As of 1964, Unimation has sold only 30 robots, and cash flow was an issue. But between 1967 and 1972, Unimation's cumulative sales volume soared from $2 million to $14 million. In the mid-1960s, a graduate student named Victor Scheinman designed robotic arms for both Stanford's MIT's AI labs before taking a fellowship at Unimation to commercialize his ideas. In conjunction with General Motors, which specified that the new robot move in the same amount of space occupied by a human with comparable reach, Unimation then brought the Puma, Programmable Universal Machine for Assembly, to market in the mid-1970s, and the worldwide market for industrial robots took off. ASEA Brown Boveri Corporation from Sweden, General Electric, and KUKA from Germany all made serious com commitments. General Motors formed a joint venture with Japan's Fanuc. Westinghouse bought Unimation for $107 million in 1984, then sold it to a French firm, Stobly, four years later. Industrial robots are essentially programmable machine tools that perform a sequence of actions, typically in assembly line scenarios. With just over a million industrial robots installed worldwide, according to the International Federation of Robotics, industry revenues amounted to about 9.5 billion U.S. dollars in 2014. After robots were deployed in automobile factories, the number of electronics factories using robots has grown rapidly in the past decade. Foxconn, the Taiwan-based company that assembles Apple products and similar goods, announced its intention to install a million robots in one company alone after 2012. Despite China's comparatively low wages, future projections favor the economics of a three-shift robot that does not sleep late or come to work having a bad day, that does not require breaks, heating or cooling on the shop floor, or even light in some cases does not require medical insurance, and th does not have any identity apart from being an instrument of production. We will discuss these economic aspects in Chapter 7. Recently, Amazon directed its attention to industrial robots that move finished goods in distribution centers rather than perform factory assembly. Rather than lifting and carrying individual items with arms and graspers, these supply chain robots locate whole shelving racks of items stocked by humans, which they then move from a storage zone to a picking and packaging station and back again. Robots bring the mobile racks to the workers who take the appropriate item off and initiate the shipping process. The robots that do this work are not humanoid in the least, sitting low to the ground and looking instead like industrial vacuum cleaners that follow tracks on the floor. These supply chain robots build on a long history of material handling devices known as automated guided vehicles, or AGVs. These carts or vehicles, either flatbed, enclosed bed, or towing a trailer, can utilize simple navigation methods such as following magnetic tape on the floor, or more sophisticated ones, such as using lasers, transponders, gyroscopes, and other tools to navigate inside fixed parameters, like inside a warehouse or hospital. The first such system was invented in 1953, and AGVs remain in wide use today. How do they do it? And what challenges are being met? The generic sense-think-act model tells us little about the complexity and challenges being addressed by robotics structures. Before its sensors, processing power, and actuators can be chosen or mounted, a robot must have a base chassis or other structure. The challenges in this domain are non-trivial. In unmanned aerial vehicles, for example, the robot must be able to fly long distances and provide a stable base for high-resolution cameras, radar, and other sensors as well as weapons. In this and other scenarios, material science is a critical piece of the question. Consider the basic physics of many man-made materials. To make a robot twice as tall typically means quadrupling its mass. 
One humanoid robot, the Willow Garage PR2, stands roughly five feet tall and weighs some 400 pounds. Such weight introduces multiple issues. The robot's portability is limited. Its heavy appendages must be carefully managed in the interest of safety, and its battery life suffers for having to move that much mass. For such robots to gain wider appeal, they must get lighter. In situations where a robot is going to interact with humans, its structure must convey some sense of familiarity to those who will encounter it. In other words, to perform its tasks, grasping, detecting, and moving, a robot must signal to the people around it how to behave. These signals are important to get right. They can be analyzed from many different perspectives, anthropology, semiotics, and psychology, among others. The robot's structure must not only facilitate the functionality needed to carry out its purpose, but also help humans cooperate with it, if only to get out of the way. Whereas some scholars think of a robot as an independent or even autonomous entity, we conceive of it as both aiding and being aided by humans. As we implement new robotic equivalents of turn signals on cars or of door handles on buildings, the design choices for robots to be situated among humans will have long-lasting consequences. Not only must a robot's structure be strong, light, and stable, but its various elements, and often the whole robot itself, need to move, adding to the criticality of structural design. Models of locomotion all have trade-offs. One, two, four, or six legs, wheels, and treads are all options on land. Wheels are extremely efficient, but are limited by the smoothness of the terrain. Multi-legged locomotion increases a robot's complexity and requires more power than wheels or treads to travel the same distance. Hybrids have also been tried, combining legs and treads, for example. For flight, biologically inspired wings have become feasible in addition to various types and arrangements of propellers. Another structural consideration is vibration and damping. For example, to make a robotic surgical tool anchored to the floor that can rise five feet, extend two feet horizontally, then lower down into a wound site, creates or requires a lightness, strength, and vibration resistance not found in most materials. Lightness matters because motors scale up proportionally. A heavier arm requires bigger motors, which both make the device heavier still and limit its battery life. A constant constraint for most autonomous robots. Very few available components are optimized for robotics application. Many parts of robots are still being borrowed from other applications. Whether in the case of motors, actuators, and gears, of microprocessors at all scales, of sensors, of interface devices, or of motive power, robotics stands to gain considerably from advances in some other domain, given the small volumes and high degree of customization currently required in the production of robotics technologies. Partly because important components are often custom-made or borrowed from other uses, few robotics efforts have been economically sustainable. Business models are hard to get right, as the exceptional success of the smartphone and video game platforms proves by contrast. Because of its place in the larger economic system, the Microsoft Kinect sensor bar, for example, is almost certainly sold at a loss, but gives robotics firms and researchers a low-cost, high-performance component well-suited to their uses. The haptic, touch-driven interface on the Nintendo Wii provides another example of a mass-market, low-cost tool ideally suited for robotics applications, one that would not have been affordable without game platforms' as high volumes. Navigating trade-offs between engineering, economics, and marketing is difficult. A robotic device can be made to do many things, but deciding in a particular situation what to design in, bolt on, or leave out is hard to get right. Increasing capability by including more degree de degrees of freedom translates into market risk. The example of military drone aircraft provides a relevant example. In 1979, the U.S. Army initiated the Aquila program to build a lightweight reconnaissance drone to radio back images of enemy troop size and location. Additional requirements quickly began to accumulate night vision, laser target markers, armor against enemy ground fire, secure radio communications, and so on. 
The drone's weight ballooned, its system complexity escalated, and of course, the cost soared out of control. What began as a $560 million project intended to build 780 drones ended by spending more than $1 billion on prototypes that didn't work very well nearly a decade later. The iRobot Roomba vacuum cleaner, by contrast, provides admirable control of scope and features in a market-driven scenario. It is worth mentioning that another new technology related to robotics, additive manufacturing or 3D printing, can construct honeycomb structures, much like human bones, that combine low resonance, low weight, and high strength. As we will see throughout this book, one constant in the interdisciplinary field of robotics is the cascading effect of improvements in a contributing subfield, whether software engineering, material science, battery chemistry, or image processing, among others. Sensors. At the most basic level, a robot needs to have awareness of where it is and its attached parts are in physical space. Cameras are one way to achieve this, but they have limitations. First, cameras can encounter lighting situations that diminish their effectiveness. Early morning and late afternoon sun glare can be blinding. Deep darkness is another obvious constraint. Snowflakes can reflect significant glare, and raindrops can render a lens useless. Visual tricks, such as painting fake potholes onto a road, can fool cameras. Turning, sig turning images into signals can be challenging for microprocessors and various algorithms. Even when a camera captures an image, deriving useful information from that image can be extremely difficult, except when the target is highly constrained, as with a license plate camera used by police departments and repo men. Once again, advances in one domain frequently lead to advances in seemingly unrelated spheres, and image recognition and processing are key fields for robotics. Acoustic rangefinders, like sonar and its equivalents, have their uses within limits. These devices are not, necessar are not especially fast, especially co when compared with la laser rangefinders, such as LiDAR. The Global P Positioning System, or GPS, is useful but not sufficient. It is imprecise for local tasks, such as finding the coffee cup on the table or the refrigerator in the cafeteria. It can be jammed, and its signal reception can be impaired by human structures, such as buildings and bridges. Other proximity sensors, such as bumpers and motion sensors, are also commonly used in robotics. As with electronic networks in a more general sense, a lower percentage of a robot's processing power is devoted to monitoring the conditions of the robot itself. Just as a mammal needs to use system, systemic feedback loops to manage its body temperature or blood sugar levels, so a robot needs to devote resources to monitor and control its internal systems. Because few robots can be entirely self-sufficient, one or more radio networks may be in play, connecting the robot to a computational cloud or base station other robots, external sensors, and the like. Temperatures, power management, system status, and the orientation of various components, such as at what angle is the left rear leg relative to the body, all need to be detected. A key example of self-monitoring is a wheel detection system. Absent GPS or a local beacon, one of the most difficult pieces of knowledge to provide a robot is where it is, particularly in comparison to two or three seconds ago. Counting wheel rotations is one basic way to calculate position. As robots become more advanced, the sensors in their graspers, claws, or hands become important. Detecting slippage, for example, must be engineered into an appendage designed to both to grasp a slippery beer bottle without dropping it and to squirt ketchup from a plastic bottle without applying too much pressure. Other sensor suites measure radiation in hazard scenarios, smell, whether of natural gas, explosives, or other materials, and sound, including speech. In the end, however, collecting sensor data and making decisions based upon it remain conceptually and computationally difficult. Thus, not only is the environment as a robot senses it often low in resolution or richness, but its sense-making apparatus is also highly fallible, regardless of the quality of sensor input. If the failure rate of a robot's sensors is sufficiently high, 
false positives will quickly render a robot experiment useless. Because clean and accurate sensor data can be rarely assumed, error detection and correction are key to improving robot performance. Computation. Once a robot senses its external and internal conditions, it must first process the sense signals into usable form so that its control systems can then direct the robot's activities. Although this is not the place to discuss computing architectures, programming language, or other important topics in computer science and engineering, it may be helpful to touch on a few of the complicating factors that make robotics so challenging. Time is a tricky business in computer science. Given that very few human phenomena are truly instantaneous, the lag between when a command is given and when it is executed can have important consequences. High-frequency trading on Wall Street is a classic example, where the number of milliseconds of network latency can determine whether an offer is accepted or rejected. Once a robot has to move, time is critical. The time issue leads to another, related area of difficulty with robots. If you grew up with early computers, you remember the absence of timely feedback. If, after hitting the Enter key, Nothing happened, and you most likely retyped the command and hit enter again. Years later, when dealing with an online order website on your much newer computer, if you clicked once and nothing happened, you likely clicked again, and maybe wound up ordering 12 pairs of socks instead of 6. Or maybe neither order registered. When a vehicle is in motion, timely coordination between inputs and actions becomes critical. Given that control systems are less than instantaneous, correcting for various lags between sensor detection, sensor processing, control, and actuation can be difficult. Oscillation will be familiar to anyone who has ridden a bike too fast down a hill. Eventually, correction cannot be applied with the proper force or speed. One answer is more computing. Horsepower, but that... One answer is more computing horsepower, but that generates more heat and more, requires more power. There are no free computational lunches. More commonly, algorithmic smoothing of both inputs and command variables can reduce the jerkiness and other artifacts of non-real-time processes. Noise exacts particular costs in the system operating in free space as opposed to on a screen. Given the predictable presence of unexpected sensor inputs, including spurious ones, strict if-then command structures are apt to fail. Given that the robot is operating in and on the physical world, noise and other errors can be self-reinforcing. Fuzzy logic is one approach to noise, and robots often devote a considerable proportion of their processing power to error correction and related tasks. A major debate in the field of artificial intelligence relates to the noise issue. For decades, it was assumed that a robot needed to use its sensors to first build a a map of its environment before interacting with it. With the limited power of the robot's central processing unit, however, this process took a long time, during which the external environment almost likely changed. Thus, the robot's cognitive maps consistently lagged reality. Although such a hierarchical approach is required in some complex scenarios, an alternative cognitive architecture has proven to work in certain robotics applications. Recall that a robot is defined as a machine that can sense, think, and act. In 1986, however, Rodney Brooks, now retired from MIT, proposed that the sense-think-act model could be replaced by a behavioral model of sense-act-sense, act-again-act, in light of new information. Rather than act on abstract representations of reality built up from sensing through computer processing and map building, robots could situate themselves in an environment that they sensed proximately. The outcome of these robots' behaviors seemed remarkably intelligent in that their actions seem to stem from cognition, when in fact they do not. The emergence of this approach for many robots, including the iRobot Roomba, vacuum cleaner means that efforts can be directed into low-level behaviors, moving, avoiding, reacting in if-then ways. For those who ask if robots are able to be programmed to protect humans or to seek some manner of goodness, as described by Isaac Asimov in his Three Laws of Robotics, Brooks has had to respond, they are not. The low-level sense-act-sense, again, act, in light of new information model, 
produces intelligent seeming behaviors as an unintentional byproduct of multiple small decisions. Robots typically have no master model of reality. Such models are simply too hard to build. This is not to say that robots are simply reactive. One major problem area involves path building and planning. If a robot arm with, say, four joints each, with X degrees of freedom, needs to move from where it is to where a, deter a detergent bottle is located, getting its fingers into position to approach the bottle from the correct angle, at the correct height, without knocking over the potted plant six inches away, is no small feat. The robot needs to pay considerable attention to balancing identification of the goal or target, the bottle, with avoidance of obstacles, the plant, within the constraints of its mechanical systems. Some planned routes will be different but come close to obstacles on the way, so safety concerns, along with a healthy respect for wide error margins in sensor reports, usually emphasize co-equal consideration of obstacles and objectives. In an increasing number of settings, robots, sensors, or both are deployed in groups. The cognitive load on such devices is complicated by the presence of other like-minded actors sharing the same physical space, strengths, limitations, and objectives. Much like birds and insects, swarm bots may not have a commanding robot in charge of determining objectives and tactics, but may rely instead on extremely simple rules that produce coordination without hierarchy. Action. Once sensing and whatever degree of cognition generate a command, robots must execute the command, often in three-dimensional space. This realm differentiates robots from two-dimensional computers in two main ways. First, movement in space is achieved through motors, hydraulics, and other actuators that are neither as precise as pixels on a screen, nor situated in as predictable an environment. Second, human-robot interactions occur in time and three physical dimensions, engaging more human sensory, cognitive, and emotional energy than a mouse and keyboard tethered to a desktop. Rules of engagement are thus more complicated. In other words, robots are harder to build in part because humans interact with them in a less constrained manner than with desktop computing. Apple's Siri voice assistants, IBM's Watson computer, and Google search all provide examples of recent advances in human-computer interface. Rather than simply accepting voice commands that replicate or that replicate mouse clicks, these natural language systems must learn to understand both multiple voices unlike earlier systems that were trained by a single speaker, and nuances that cannot simply reflect dictionary definitions. Imagine encountering a neighbor's dog on a walk, saying, scratch your back, back off, come back here, or go back home, can reflect four radically different intentions. Here is where artificial intelligence connects to the state of robotics. When machines interact with people, the people are usually ambiguous about what they desire and how they express those desires. Stating the command versus typing the search term introduces further types of complexity into the interpretive process. Although the vocabulary of robotic science refers to control as a core function of robotic systems, the word control is actually problematic. Compared to a human steering a radio-controlled toy race car, for example, different layers of different software architectures may be either more random or less goal-oriented than the observed behaviors of the system would suggest. In autonomous robots, as, a, as opposed to pre-programmed, anchored factory robots that do the same task repeatedly, a standard architecture has taken shape. At the highest level, human direction is achieved, and the robotic system plans, sets goals, and possibly changes the shape of the robot. The high-level control hands off to an intermediate layer, where navigation and obstacle avoidance work in parallel. Finally, low-level control over motors and similar devices translates the high-level commands into physical motion, monitoring, and minutely adjusting speed, vehicle altitude, and stability. Feedback from lower-level sensors flows upward at the same time that command logic is translated down the stack. Why so many robots all of a sudden? Research put into robo robotics has been conducted since the mid-1960s. So why are robots suddenly entering the mainstream in the 2010s? 
let us consider the question from the supply side push as well as the demand side pull. On the demand side, geopolitics plays a role. Resistance to immigration has intensified the need for automation of mundane tasks for social reasons. Indeed, Japan, Germany, and South Korea lead the world in industrial robots per worker. All three countries have both low birth rates and large automotive manufacturing sectors. In the future, personal care robots are expected to help address the consequences of increased longevity along with the desire for low immigration. When robots are used in supply chains and manufacturing, they can bring standardization to precise repetitive tasks such as welding or circuit board assembly, or else free human labor from autonomous, low-value low tasks, such as hauling soiled laundry in hospitals. Although Google, Bovo, Volvo, Audi, Mercedes-Benz, and other firms are developing self-driving vehicles, many conventional auto manufacturers are introducing, introducing robotic or robot light behavior into their products. Whether in the form of automated parallel parking, Path following, like lane departure warning, proximity detection, both in rear cameras for parking maneuvers and front grilled mounted sensors for anti tailgating, or GPS, modern automobiles employ a variety of systems whose sensors, logic, and intervention satisfy the basic definition of robot. As P.W. Singer points out in Wired for War, the U.S. investment in robotic battlefield technologies can be tied to the increasing political cost of military casualties after Vietnam. After the death of more than 58,000 U.S. soldiers in Southeast Asia helped create strong anti-military sentiment on the home front, high-ranking defense planners along with civilian legislators, most notably Senator John Warner of Virginia in 2000, began to commit more resources to unmanned systems. The rise in asymmetric warfare tactics in Iraq, Somalia, Afghanistan, and elsewhere further fueled the demand for tools to defend against improvised explosive devices, IEDs, and other weapons of insurgencies. In the longer term, rob robots in combat could conceivably cut the cost of long-term care for wounded soldiers. The generation of amputees who were injured by IEDs will be expensive to care for over at least the next 50 years, barring breakthroughs in prosthetics, mobility, or tissue regeneration. Finally, NASA has helped advance the state of robotics, primarily in the development of its Mars landers. Indeed, Mars is the only planet in the solar system to be populated solely by robots. On the supply side, six broad developments combined to make robots more feasible. 1. Moore's Law For nearly 50 years, Intel co-founder Gordon Moore's observation regarding the number of transistors on an integrated circuit, or Moore's Law, has held true. Transistor density, and with it, overall processing power, double roughly every two years. Because many robot tasks are processor-intensive, like path planning, environmental detection or sense-making, or safety interlocks, Increased processing power and speed makes more tasks real-time rather than either slow or off-board. More on-board computer cores mean more tasks can be attempted or coordinated with a given chip. Advances in graphics processing for video games and in display drivers benefit robotic translation of the real world via sensors to logic that can be incorporated into cognitive processes and vice versa. 2. Components the Kinect camera from Microsoft's gaming system, along with the accompanying motion detection and 3D software firmware, means computer vision is more affordable, both financially and computationally. Robotics is borrowing stepper motors from the much larger markets for, car for cameras in car windows, for example. Small, low-power, high-resolution cameras are being made in the millions for mobile phones. Low-power, low-heat microprocessors can also be imported into robotics applications, in addition to chips intended for cell phones, the Arduino microcontroller, and Raspberry Pi credit card size Linux PC bring extremely low-priced high-performance into laboratories and product development environments. Mass production of computer tablets has also dropped the prices of the touchscreen, a previously specialized component. 3. 
math. Algorithms for path navigation, image processing, sense making, and situational awareness can be borrowed from advances in adjacent domains, such as search, social network analysis, gaming, video rendering, and natural language processing. Machine learning has emerged as a key field in search and big data analysis in return ar- to return artificial intelligence research to the forefront after a period of lower interest and funding. A broad open source movement has extended to robotics to make more code libraries available so that fewer projects must start from scratch. Rather than writing the world's 55th or 95th robot door opening library, for example, programmers can import or adapt the community's attempt at solving this common problem. Human for human talent. Whether from Lego Mindstorm's robot competitions, increasing numbers of computer science majors, or the rise of standalone departments of robotics in universities around the world, more and better students are entering the field. As industry continues to hire specialists to help build industrial robots, sensor-driven technologies in automobiles and home appliances, and military and aerospace technologies, the appeal of the field combines economic logic with the undisputed cool factor of getting to build robots. Five, money. In the private sector, the dramatic share price increase at Intuitive Surgical, along with several high-profile acquisitions of robotics startups in 2012, have helped attract venture funding to robotics companies. Google's high-visibility acquisitions of Nest for $3.2 billion and Boston Dynamics for an undisclosed amount attracted further attention to the field. Not only did Amazon buy Kiva for $775 million, but Japan's SoftBank bought a stake in France's Aldebaran humanoid robotics company for a reported $100 million. Finally, it's impossible to overstate the importance of the massive growth in military robotic spending for bomb disposal, border surveillance, and drone warfare, to name three current state projects. Although firm numbers are difficult to drive given the complex and classified nature of defense funding, one industry estimate pegged 2010 defense robot spending at $5.8 billion, projected to increase to $8 billion by 2016. 6. Miscellany The broad demands of robot building draw on advancements, draw on advancements in more developed fields. Harmonic drive gears, invented in 1957, are widely used in precision applications such as printing, machine tools, and aerospace alongside with robotics. Their high torque, compactness, and light weight, and ability to achieve much higher ratios than traditional planetary gears in the same physical volume are just some of the many features attractive to robot builders. GPS is ubiquitous, free, and can be used as part of a robot center suite for gross-level position detection. Wi-Fi addresses a key problem in autonomous autonomous robotics, how to connect the free-range device to a base station, outboard processor, external camera, or other device. Previous generations of robotics researchers had to adapt complicated and slow wireless protocols or tether robots with cables to build up scaffolding for their research. The availability of cheap, robust wireless networking frees up today's researchers to address more fundamental problems. Wireless networking also paves the way for cloud robotics, in which heavy processing can be offloaded to servers either off-chassis or off-premises, with attendant increases in shared learning, learning across devices. Laser scanners came into use in the 1960s, shortly after the invention of the laser. As its cost dropped and reliability improved, LiDAR was widely used on autonomous robots, including self-driving cars, for both perception of the environment and object classification. Improvements in software engineering, in debugging, principles of modularity, new types of development frameworks, these have helped advance the state of robotics, given that robots require significant amounts of code to run, and that there are no dominant robotic operating systems ready out of the box, like Windows. Commercial software, such as Mathematica is useful in sensor processing and other robotic functions. Innovations in material science, whether polymers used to make more lifelike and flexible skin in human-facing robots, carbon fiber and aircraft metals used in unmanned craft, or smart fabrics that can electrically conduct, 
resist, and semiconduct as needed have also helped advance the field. Indeed, though it's greatly improved ba- through its greatly improved batteries, material science made possible power innovations in laptops and smartphones, which could never have been funded from the limited research dollars for all of the robotics fields combined. Just as computer science took chess as a challenge for its method. Uh, for its methods for decades, so robotics has taken soccer's World Cup as its ultimate benchmark for team-based independent robots. Begun in 1997, the Robot Soccer World Cup serves as an annual standardized proving ground for research in artificial intelligence and related fields. The official goal is stated as follows. But, quote, by the middle of the 21st century, a team of fully autonomous humanoid robot soccer players shall win a soccer game, complying with the official rules of FIFA against the winner of the most recent World Cup, end quote. This brief sec- summary shows how broad and deep the interest in robotics has become and only hints at its future potential for many areas of life. It is unlikely that the forces driving advances in robotics, like demographics, technological innovations, warfare and politics, ever-increasing computer power, it's unlikely that they will diminish in importance anytime soon. The coming decades will provide the proving ground for different types of robots, which is to say, the future of robotics looks to be extremely bright and somewhat chaotic. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and visit my channel for more exciting content.